prayer is listening. I am forever entangled with ultimate reality. How do I remain conscious of this connection? How do I find this deep place in the center of my own real life? How do I communicate? I don't really have a problem with communication. I communicate constantly. My life is full of screens and connections and communications. I can't even keep up with it all. Am I missing something here? Yes, very probably. So what am I missing? Perhaps your life. Perhaps you're missing the authenticity that emerges only from a connection with your depth, with your essential reality. Did you hear about the murder at a San Francisco train station? The shooter slowly aimed his gun at the victim multiple times before firing. There were several dozen people present at the scene, but no witnesses? No witnesses? Why not? All of the people at the scene, except the killer with the gun, were busy communicating with their electronic devices. They were blind to what was happening around them. Are you saying my life is not full of meaningful communication? I'm saying that your consuming communications may be at a surface level. Many of us are being entertained to death, literally distracted from a substantive encounter with the reality of our own lives. There is a deep place available to each of us when we are open to connecting beneath the surface presented by our five senses of touch, taste, smell, sound, and sight. To discover the always available deep place, we also need to venture beneath the surface of human feelings and human thinking. How do I communicate with the deep? How do I do this? The gateway into the deep is always discovered in the same place, the infinite silence. All of the substantive, depth-seeking traditions have their origin in an encounter with the infinite silence. This remains the starting point and the ending point for each of us seeking a deep journey. But first, we have to stop, pay attention, and listen beneath the surface. I always begin my prayer in silence. It is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. We need to listen because it's not what we say, but what God says to and through us that matters. As blood is to the body, prayer is to our essential reality. My teacher's teacher, Saoki Kodo Roshi, said that this sitting meditation is good for nothing. I always said, you know, this is good for nothing. <laughs> and that is what I recommend people, and it's really difficult to uh, encourage people to practice this way because this is good for nothing. <laughs> Deep in my heart, I think, you know, to practice good for nothing doesn't is the more, most authentic practice in Buddhist tradition. That's why I'm okay. <laughs> That's why my life is meaningful. In our tradition, we call this sitting meditation Zazen. Za is sitting and Zen is meditation. When we sit in this posture and breathe quietly, so many things are happening in our minds. What we do in our sitting meditation is just let come any thought or feeling or emotion, just let them come up and then let them go away. We actually do nothing. In our sitting, thought or any condition of our mind is like a cloud in the sky. Somehow the cloud appears in the sky and changing the form. 
staying for a while and then disappear. Same as the clouds in the sky, any kind of thought appears, stay for a while and disappear. I have been practicing this meditation for about 50 years. From my experience, no thought has stayed forever. Everything is coming and going. So what we do is let them come up freely and let them go away freely. We don't try to fight against our thought or don't try to interact with our thought. And we don't try to grasp that which is coming up from our consciousness. So we actually do nothing but let the things happen in our mind. Of course, when we are aware that we are interacting with those thoughts, we stop doing that and return to this posture, breathing and keep our eyes open. That means we don't sleep and let go of whatever thought is coming up. That is the point in our meditation practice or sitting practice. It is very difficult to do nothing. Just sitting means just sit without doing anything else. So this is a really simple practice. We do nothing but sitting. But this posture, breathing and keep our eyes open, that means awake. But that is all and we do nothing else. But if you try to sit even five minutes, you will find it very difficult. Uh, one day I found myself sitting alone, not as a practitioner within the Sangha, or not as a Buddhist priest in a kind of a uh, social occupation. <laughs> I really sat myself and I found a uh, deep peace there. That means I don't need to be a good boy. I can be just sit. And I found that is really uh, Zazen that is good for nothing. But before that, I, I intellectually understood mm -hmm. uh, that it is good for nothing as a Buddhist philosophy. <laughs> but I found that is the ground mm -hmm. we need to practice with that desire to be a good boy, in, not only in the secular, mundane way, but even as a Buddhist. I became free from my desire to be a good Buddhist. <laughs> Finally, I, f I think first time I found f the real meaning of uh, that is good for nothing, or practice without expectation or gaining mind. So just be there with this body and mind. I think what's really important is to make time for stillness. It's the opposite of the bouncing and distraction. And stillness, I think, is the cornerstone of an interior life, to be able to find and, and make the space for stillness. We have to choose it, I think. And that can mean many different kinds of things. We can learn and practice and, uh, every day as, as I, I practice every day, um, to sit in stillness with no distractions. So that could, you could do that for five minutes, you could do it for 20 minutes. I do a practice for 20 minutes every morning of just simply sitting in stillness. And by doing that, we become, the first thing that happens is you become aware of what you're thinking because, right, we never stop thinking. And when that happens, you go, oh, yeah, I'm thinking, oh, okay, let that go. The thoughts are always there. It's okay, just let it go. And it's an always, it's a return to stillness. When you notice a thought, oh, return. And that constant returning makes us stronger to be able to choose stillness. And the more we do that, the more space we have. It, it's kind of like a, there's more space in my head. There's more silence. Uh, there aren't a thousand thoughts 
all the time. So making an intentional practice of being in stillness and cultivating that, whether you begin with a few minutes or 20 minutes every day, is important. But we can, we can sneak it in, you know. We can, we can sneak that in by doing things like, um, if you have a, a cell phone, is to turn off the notifications. Don't let it ping you every second, you know, which takes our attention all these places. Silence is very important. We don't value it enough in our daily life. We need to be alone a lot and in quiet. We need quiet time and alone time, and most people nowadays are too busy to have that in their lives. But it is the principal conduit for contemplation. And contemplation is how you learn to listen. It's also how you learn to enjoy life to the fullest, because then you appreciate every moment. So make sure you have moments of silence and moments of doing nothing, because doing nothing is one of the most important things we can do in life. <laughs> really doing nothing. But I think one of the ways in which we come to that place of dispossession is A, one, is through a, a practice, a practice that will alter consciousness itself. And there's, there's nothing that parallels the question of silence and the question of the, of, the, of the meditation or the contemplative practices. Across the board, there's nothing that we have as humans as simple as watching the breath as simple as the Jesus prayer, as simple as simply allowing ourselves to sit in silence and watch the thoughts pass. It has to be a practice. How am I practicing deep listening? Am I conscious and intentional in my interior practice? Or is my consciousness being shaped primarily by voices, distractions, and entertainments bombarding me from the external surface world. Today, I set out to claim my own interior life. Please join me in this quest. <laughs>